Uh, I'm Jem Rayfield from the Financial Times. Um, I've come from the UK, so I'm really jet lagged. Um, so if I'm not making any sense, just interrupt me. Um, okay, so slightly different use case from what everyone else has been talking about. Um, at the FT, we're trying to change our publishing architecture to use semantic annotation so that we can search for content, aggregate content, and um, find related content. Um, it's using similar principles. So if you don't know about the FT, the FT have been publishing financial news for 125 years, and we are moving mostly towards digital now, but we still have a paper, and it's pink. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, our audience is some rich and powerful people. <laughs> we have lots of journalists all over, all over the world. Um, and a lot of our editors uh, use our content management systems to author our site um, from, from all over the place. Our current architecture uh, and site is based on a relational database. It has search and it doesn't have any semantics or any an annotation. It's pretty traditional publishing architecture. So I'll show you a demo of where we're going. Um, so uh, this is an entirely automated site that uses uh, concept extraction and natural language processing to um, annotate all of the articles that are published as they're, as they're published, annotating them with a semantic fingerprint uh, and then classifying those, those documents into categories. So you can see here that you've got a home section, world section, a company section, et cetera, et cetera, a market section. And the back end system is basically use the semantic fingerprint to classify those con pieces of content and, and push them into, into buckets. So, um, for example... Sorry. That's oh, so this one. Yeah. Um, sorry. Okay, so um, just to repeat, uh, we've got a system that's basically uh, uh, automatically doing concept extraction on all of our published articles and then classifying those using the semantic fingerprint. So we're annotating our, our articles and applying uh, semantic identifiers and then bucketing those into classification so you can see what groups of content. So uh, an example of this is uh, here. You can see that we're annotating this, this article with particular things that it's found. So it's found an organization, company, both of them. Uh, it's found locations, Cairo, for example, and uh, These are the top things it's found in, 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 its, uh, in its extraction engine. And it's also, and it says that there's a slightly more information so if we click on Vodafone, for example, sorry, near the microphone. <laughs> ah. Um, it's using a semantic graph behind the scenes, so you can see here that it gives you a lot more information about that, that company. So you can see uh, who the company is, other types of companies using semantic graph underneath the hood, so that you can navigate through uh, similar pieces of content. Um, you can then also do some interesting things around the search. So if we put in orange both in the search here, you can find all of the pieces of content in the past that have been annotated with those concepts. So see a, a trending graph over time for those pieces of, of content. Um, using the semantic fingerprint of this article, this article has a number of uh, annotations on it, all with um, weights. It's finding, using a TFDI uh, solar index, all of those articles that have a similar semantic uh, uh, fingerprint, and then ordering those by the time and allowing us to show related content. Um, in addition, you can do things like, like search. So using the annotations, you can find all the content that has those tags within them and some fancy faceted search. So it's a slightly different way of publishing uh, FD content allowing uh, people to use the annotations or the, uh, the semantic understanding of what those pieces of content are about to find more content, aggregate content, find related content. So how was that all built? Right, this architecture is basically we have a, uh, within the newsroom we have a curation or an annotation tool that allows the journalist to apply uh, annotations to the content. So it will do some concept extraction, it will suggest those terms to the journalist, the journalist will then moderate those and say this piece of content is about a particular thing, mentioned, located, it uses a semantic predicate to annotate the, the content. We store the content in a, in a document store and we also store the annotations within an RDS store. Uh, Above that, we have a set of APIs that allows to um, 
find the content via, via those tags. Also use uh, a gate concept extraction engine that uses a controlled recovery and the RDF score to um, return suggestions to the journalists. So we use a sort of natural language processing uh, within gate, which is open source framework, plus sort of things like part speech, tagging, entity extraction, all those types of things to be able to uh, serve the UI. And then we build all of our website on top of that using these, these APIs. Um, so we have a ontology of our natural language processing stack built on gate and it integrates with our backend uh, semantic database so that all of the suggestions that are suggested as journalists are the same identifiers when we're in a control recovery, which means that the uh, suggestions to the journalists are those that are added or uh, those uh, semantic identifiers within our, in our database. So uh, we have an ontology model, which isn't the open annotation ontology that everyone's been talking about, but it's, it's similar and uh, we, may, we may replace it after, after looking at some of the stuff that's been talked about. Uh, the last two days. So, I can read that. Our annotation model sort of uses similar concepts to the open annotation model. We have uh, classifications of the content that are of an uh, annotatable type, and we have concepts which are linked um, via an annotation predicates, so things like about, mentions, locate, etc. And we, we make those equivalent to open schemas like R news and schema.org um, so that we can then publish our content, make those link up with the uh, standard schemas. Uh, I have a richer diagram which will sort of show you the scope of what we've been modeling. So, as well as modeling our content, so we model content in terms of blogs, articles, videos, images, etc. so we can annotate those. We have a simple annotation ontology that allows us to join those pieces of content and it's annotatable to something in the real world domain. So uh, for the FT, we're particularly interested in things like uh, organizations, companies, people who work for, for, for companies, collaborators of companies, competitors, etc., etc. We've got a rich uh, RDF model that describes the, the business domain and then allows us to annotate our content using, using this RDF model. As you can see here, one has got stuff that describes all the things within uh, the financial industry, so things like uh, uh, listings, exchanges, shares, bonds, Etc. Et et that allows us to be able to have a rich, uh, rich site that allows us to use the domain model to really understand our content. Uh, so there's some idea if you want to read that. But. Okay, so, uh, so we've got some tooling. This is one of the tools in, in the newsroom that basically shows that when uh, things get annotated, uh, they can see all of the things that have been annotated in turn in Amsterdam. You can see uh, the graph of Amsterdam, the semantic, semantic graph that describes Amsterdam all the details. Amsterdam, all those documents that have that uh, annotation. Uh, we're working on a tool uh, that journalists can be uh, implement, uh, taking. Uh, I've worked at the Press Association and they have a very similar uh, annotation tool that allows the journalists to apply uh, tags. So this is during the Olympics. Um, you can see here that they're applying uh, concept tags uh, from a controlled vocabulary in the same sort of way. Um, at the BBC, uh, you can see here they have an annotation tool that allows the journalist to apply concepts again, but you can see here that it's invigorated using uh, linked open identifiers. So, uh, again, concept abstraction, it's found Gareth Barry, but it's Gareth Barry, the football player, and it's not a scientist or a, a journalist, and they know exactly who they're attacking. And the same if you're attacking with a, a location, a geospatial location, which will graph and allow the journalist to pick particular location. Um, yeah. um, the BBC site is all powered, the sports site is all powered by this technology. Um, so whenever you go to any of these pages, you've got aggregations of content based on semantic annotation. So uh, Team GB, for example, ag aggregate all of the content uh, and the graph and then underneath it, all those, those images, videos, etc. that have that semantic annotation. I've run really quickly, but that's me done. Thank you. So I understand that you're you're creating a new ontology for annotations, or has this been ontology been created long before the two ontologies that have been built? Sorry, say that again. Um, I understand you're you're building a new ontology to describe the annotations, and why did you have to go that route and not use some of the ontologies that have already been built? Uh, to be completely frank, I didn't actually know the open ontology <laughs> ontology uh, ontology existed. 
Um, and I think we probably will refactor our code to make use of it um, because it does look very applicable. In fact, it's almost identical to the stuff we're doing. So, yeah. And Dan, there is one to your left. Um, I think that's a really cool use case. I thank you for sharing the details um, behind that particular industry. And I'm interested in how much of that is, you know, that type of technology specifically, you know, targeted for the journalists themselves and, and how much of that kind of semantic power that analytics might you want to expose to a wider audience? Uh, so during the Olympics, the BBC had a problem where they wanted to create 15,000 odd pages and only had a, a journalist footprint of about 10 journalists. Uh, it was impossible for them to manage all the content. So the only way we could really do that was by automating the annotation of content and then allowing a small set of journalists to manage all that content by, by automated indexing. The, the other flip side is we did uh, semantic advertising based on the tag. So if you want a page that mentioned David Beckham, we might have uh, an arm money advert. So there's sort of multiple use cases in the publishing space. For, for annotation in terms of journalist workflow and, and commercial revenue, etc. Does that answer your question? No. Ah, <laughs> sorry about that. So the FT will not be publishing their content, however the BBC will be. Uh, there is a set of public APIs and RDF dumps that will be able to expose and everyone will be able to download the content and put it as part of the linked open data cloud. Yeah, and, and our analytics at the FT, we're using uh, the user's semantic fingerprint as well as the, the audit that the content semantic fingerprint to do our analytics so we can show the content based on user journeys and behavior. Okay. Does that answer? <laughs> okay, thank you very much.